Hello everybody, welcome to episode 3 of the Watt Quick Tip series. In this episode I'm going to be going over 5 tips for trading your health better in World of Tanks, how to play corners, etc. Uh, first of all I want to give a big shout out to Necto for helping me out with this video and to Patty as well. Uh, without further ado, let's just get into the first tip. Alright, so the first tip for effectively trading in World of Tanks, this tip here is geared towards tanks that have, especially heavy tanks which have poor upper hull armors or they have some kind of weak spot off the side of their upper hull. So for example, the 277, the IS-7, the 113, those are all tanks that you can pen their upper hull when they're trying to side scrape. Another example is a 60 TP. Even though its upper hull is very hard to penetrate, it has a weak spot off to the side um, that you can penetrate while it's side scraping. And so usually when you're side scraping with these tanks, it's a huge pain because I'll just line it up. So you're 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 going you're poking around a corner at like this angle. And the problem is your gun is here. So imagine the corners right here. Before your gun is even around the corner, they have access to this whole upper plate right here and they can pen it pretty easily so that's why people say that the i7 the 277 and even to an extent the 113 even though it doesn't have this pike nose are not great side scrapers i mean 113 is a little better because it has a mid mounted turret not a front mounted turret but that's besides the point but there is actually a solution it's not a perfect solution but it's a way to greatly minimize the chance that you're going to take damage while side scraping in these tanks because sometimes you're in a pinch and you just need a side scrape to get off some damage or you're facing some lower tiers and you think it's worth it. Now the tip is, instead of pointing your gun at the opponent and then pulling around the corner and shooting them, before you pull around the corner you want to go like this. Uh, you want to gun block the upper corner of your hull, just like so. This might not seem like a big deal, but a lot of the time, uh, it makes it much harder to pen this, especially for tanks that are firing heat ammunition because they can't pen through your gun, or if they just have low pen APCR or AP rounds, then they aren't gonna pen this if they hit your gun. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all I've got to, got to mention for that. Let me show you an example in game. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how not to do this. This is how most people side scrape in their 277 and IS-7. So they line up at the corner, they give the opponent a shot like this where they can only see their side. But let's say, let's say, so this isn't really, it's kind of hard to show this. They can't see my upper, upper uh, plate right now, right? So they can't pen me, they can only shoot my side. But the problem is I can't shoot them back. Uh, I'm just sitting here waiting for them to fire. So what if you want to bait them into firing and then shoot them in return? Well, the best way to do that is, like I said, to gun block your upper hull. But first, I'm going to show you how not to do that. And that's just how most people do it standard, where they have their gun pointed straight towards the enemy. And I'll show you his perspective in a second. Basically, he can see my entire upper plate right here. And it's a very easy pen for him. But this is how most people do it. This is how most people side scrape. All right, let's uh, switch over to his perspective and show what he can see. All right, so here's his perspective. This is me doing it incorrectly, how most people would actually do it. Not gun blocking my upper hull. I'll show you what kind of shot he has. Now he is firing AP, so it's a little bit harder because when I lurch backwards, my upper hull becomes uh, non-penable, but when it's on flat ground or when it's angled downwards, it's green. So as you can see, I have to expose about this far, and it's kind of hard to see because of this tracer. But he has a very easy penetration right here because my gun is not blocking it. So if he really wants to pen me, all he has to do is time his shot for when I'm angled downwards like this, or even just on flat ground. Or if he had heat loaded, he probably wouldn't even have to time it very much, and he can pen me easily. Look how easy this shot is. Alright, now let's switch over to my perspective and show you how to do it correctly. Alright, here's my perspective. And so here you can see I've made the transition. Instead of just aiming my gun directly at him, I've turned my gun so that it covers the upper portion of my hull right here. 
This makes it a much tougher shot for the opponent. But uh, there's actually a little bit more to this than just moving your gun in front of your hull. You might have just seen that I switched my gun from pointing in this direction over to this direction. And that's because there's a very common mistake when trying to do this gun block. And that is to move your gun too far out to the side at this kind of angle. You really want your gun to be out in front of you. And so this angle, even though it looks like it's not covering it necessarily, it actually is covering it way more than when I had my gun pointed in this direction. And you'll see that from his perspective in a second. I'll show you. Um, but here's what it looks like when I'm side scraping. I'm just trying to bait his shot. Now, if you really want to make this a little bit more advanced, uh, instead of just going rocking back and forth um, with your gun just locked in place, you can wiggle your gun a little bit. Now, don't overdo it because if they have like four brain cells and not the reaction of like a fucking 96 year old grandpa, then they're just gonna wait for your gun to move out of the way and then shoot it. So just wiggle your gun very slightly. Now keep in mind, after they shoot, you're gonna have to retaliate and shoot them back. So it's not exactly something you can just, okay, I'll take their shot and then I'll worry about shooting them right after. You kind of have to try to place your gun in a, in a way that it covers your hull, but then you're also really ready to flick over to them and shoot them back. All right, let's switch over to his perspective and see how that transition from this kind of angle to this kind of angle, and we'll see what kind of difference that makes. Here's his perspective. Uh, in a second, you'll see the transition. So this is my initial, initial, uh, my initial gun placement where it was too far off to the side. And as you can see, my gun actually isn't covering very much of my hull at all, even though it kind of looked like it was from my perspective, at least that's what I think. But as you can see, I'm barely covering it at all. But when I make the adjustment, you'll see the, the difference instantly. Right there, boom. Now look how hard it is to actually pen this, especially with heat or AP shells. I mean, both of his shells, honestly, it's really hard to pen. Like. I have a very tiny target here and like right here. And so here I am rocking back and forth. It's it's not like an easy shot. Like a good a good player is going to hit this almost every time, especially from this very close distance. But imagine I'm way back here or something in side scraping. It's suddenly a much harder shot because it's somewhat RNG dependent and also it's very much timing dependent. So if they don't have great ping or if they're just not a great they're not great at timing shots, they're going to miss. And so now I'm going to show you just some general side scraping gameplay from my perspective. I probably wouldn't play like this completely in a pub battle. Um, just because I think it's a little bit too greedy unless the game is almost over. Or if, I, if I'm if i playing like against a lower tier, like imagine I'm in like an IS-3, then I could probably get away with this. But in general, you don't want to force trades unless you have some kind of advantage or if the game is ending. But I'll just show you what it looks like anyway. So I'm trying to gun block here. You can see I'm covering most of it. And I'll just play and you can watch. Now, as you saw, my gun was just aimed like this. He, he had an easy shot up here. But if I'm wiggling my gun just slightly, it suddenly makes the shot much harder. Now the other thing about just exposing part of your upper plate and, exp and uh, covering the rest with your gun, it gives them something to shoot at. Which, sometimes when you're side scraping, one of the biggest problems is your enemy just refuses to fire because you're not giving them a penetrating angle. Like, you're literally just giving them your tracks and your side. If you want to make an effective side scrape where you can actually trade back and they're actually willing to fire at you, you have to give them something to pen. And that's going to, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later in the video with a mouse re replay on Stu's Yankee about giving your opponent a penning shot if you want to trade with them because if you don't give them a penning shot unless they're a really bad player and they just don't know that they can't pen you at all they're just not going to shoot and they're, you're just going to be sitting there staring at each other like staring at a wall or something all right i think that's all for this replay let's go on to uh another replay in a 60 tp where i show how to do this as well it'll be short um because i think you probably already get the gist of this. Sorry if this is a little long-winded, by the way. I just want to make it thorough. I know a lot of people don't prefer that, but it makes me feel a lot better if I actually explain everything in depth. 
I wanted to show the 60 TP, 60 TP because it's probably the best tank in the game um, for getting use out of this strategy. The reason why it's so good at this is because its upper hull is extremely strong. Um, except it has one tiny weak spot on the side. It's not really tiny, but it's it's not a very large weak spot, and its gun is actually a very high caliber, so it's very large. So it can cover a large portion of its hull. So I'm just going to show you some general side scraping in this tank. Now imagine if I was just pointed straight at at uh, our friend here, and this is a shot he had. Like, this is an easy penetration if he just aims correctly, but I'm going to show you what happens when I try to gun block. Now suddenly, my weak spot is much harder to hit. Most of it is actually covered and he can't even hit it. He has a very small shot. This is a lot of these these uh, shots here, not when I'm angled down like this, but a lot of this here is just a pen roll now because I covered the majority of my, my weak point. So here I am, uh, just kind of showing you how easy the shot is. But then I move my gun again, and you'll see it suddenly becomes much harder. Just look at that shot. That is not an easy penetration. Alright, let's go on to the next tip. Tip number two. Tip number two is to wait until you're fully loaded before peeking a corner um, so as not to scare off enemy tanks. This especially applies when you're in a advantageous position over an enemy tank so for example you're a higher tier shooting a lower tier or you have a great turret armor this especially works in hull downs I'll, it's probably easier just to show you this tip rather than try to explain it so first I'm gonna show you how a lot of people um, would peek this corner so I get a free shot in he backs off obviously because he's a bit scared, but he has a better reload than me, so he can shoot me once. But since I stayed poked, he kind of realized that I was going to shoot him and he backed off. Uh, it's kind of hard to show this in a training room, by the way. Just keep that in mind because like we're both good players so it just doesn't feel right to just stay poked against somebody who has a clear advantage over you but I'll show it again uh, so I shoot now I poke out waiting for my reload he shoots me but this is the crucial moment he sees me he just fired I'm sitting right in front of him he knows that I'm about to reload in a second so what does he do he just backs off now, here I just shoot to pretend like I fired. And here's what you should do instead. So you see, instead of just poking out in the open, waiting for my reload, I stay behind the corner to bait him into peeking up into this window because he thinks he's safe for a second because I pulled behind cover, but in reality, my gun is great at snapping targets, so I can just pull around this corner and shoot him once I'm loaded. But if I was just sitting there in this corner, reloading and just pre-aiming on him, he just wouldn't poke at all. This tip works especially well on tanks that have great snapshotting abilities, such as the E50M. And watch what happens. So he thinks he's safe, but I poke, and since I'm fully loaded, I can fire immediately. Now, I don't see many people just sit in a hull down and just stare at somebody while they're reloading. But what I do see pretty often is they'll pull into cover while they're reloading. And then they'll poke like one second before they're loaded. They'll aim in, then they'll be loaded, and by the time they're loaded, the enemy's already around the corner. What you want to do instead most of the time, unless the enemy's really dumb and doesn't want to back up, is to pull out, is to pull back, uh, hide, and then once you're loaded, then you peek, and then they won't be expecting it, and you can shoot them. This works especially good against, like I said, not great players or lower tier players. I'll just show like one more example or something and then uh, for this tip instead of just showing a training room example I managed to find an example in an actual match so I fire I'm just sitting in front of him so he's gonna get a shot off but he should be scared but I pull into cover so he's not scared anymore okay this okay this was one where I, I didn't reset I think Okay, so here I pull into cover, or I pull out too early. This is what I was talking about. I'm not fully loaded, but I poked anyway. 
he sees that and he has time to back off and I only just got loaded so I don't have time to shoot him. Alright, this will be a lot easier to show in an actual example in a random battle so let's go to that real quick and then I think it will make more sense. Here I am in my s conk on Ghost Town and I'm going to peek around this corner side scraping and I find myself a torn vine. Now I get a free shot into him but instead of just poking this corner immediately and well I guess I do for the first shot because he wasn't poked yet I get a free shot in but instead of just holding the corner and then just pre-aiming on him instead what I do is I hide now the reason I'm hiding here is not because I'm afraid of taking damage from him because I don't believe he'll be able to pen me the reason I'm hiding is because I want to wait for my reload to be done so that he stays poked and then I peek when I'm reloaded and then I shoot him because if I just sit here he's just gonna shoot me and then back up because he's gonna be scared of me retaliating but since he's a little bit slow I can peek as soon as I'm loaded and even though he shoots me he doesn't pen and I get one in return I might do this again uh, I don't think I do actually I think he learns his lesson alright so that's all for this tip let's go on to the next one the third tip is to bait enemy tanks into peeking by locking your turret in one position in a direction away from where they're facing. Uh, I'll just show you what I mean first and then I'll give some more explanation. So here he spotted me on the corner. He's afraid. He backs up. But look at what I do. I turn my turret. I act like I'm not paying attention to him. Even if he knows that I'm baiting him, sometimes he'll still fall for it because they think he won't react in time. So he's going to peek because I'm not looking at him. But then I get a free shot in. Unfortunately, I bounce. He bounces me in return. And then I try it again. Try to bait him. And as soon as he... I try to time it so that as soon as he starts peeking, I, I turn my turret towards him. Now again, this is another tip that works best in tanks that can snapshot very well. Also, heavily armored tanks with good turrets it usually works. Because then there's less, less risk of you taking damage in return. It also works best against inexperienced players and players in lower tier tanks than you that can't really harm you in return. That's what a lot of these tips are is for trading against trading in situations where you have the advantage. This one I think I think we skip because I, I, he gets unspotted. So he gets respotted. He's afraid, he pulls behind the corner. Now I'm I'm turret baiting again. And unfortunately I miss. Now, one thing I want to mention about this tip, obviously, if I'm looking at a fucking tower of a castle and there's no enemy over here, this is not going to have a great chance of success against an enemy who has like four brain cells, unless they know that you're trying to bait them and they try to take the risk anyway because they think you won't react in time. Where this tip really shines is when, say, you're, say this is an open field and there's an enemy over here. And so it looks like you're looking at that enemy, but in reality, you're just baiting this guy. You're looking at this enemy only to get this guy to peek. So he thinks you're looking at his teammate, and so he peeks, and then you just quickly turn and snapshot him. Now, <clears throat> for this tip, I have a few actual examples that I managed to find, so let's go into the random battles and take a look. I'm in my mouse on Sand River Encounter, and as you can see, there's a T-103 over here he's about to go down to a one shot as you'll see in a second there he goes he goes down to a one shot now I could just stare at him but as you can see I'm still reloading and so if I do that he's just gonna back up because he know he knows I'll shoot him so what I'm doing here is I'm turret baiting him this is kind of a hybrid between uh, turret baiting and waiting to poke um, before you're reloading, but I'm already kind of poked. And another thing is this guy's in a very annoying position because I can't pressure these guys. I can't drive up here and start pressuring these guys when he's still alive. I mean, I can because I'm a mouse, but it would be kind of annoying because he could pen my side turret sometimes if he loads gold. So it's very important that we take him out. But as soon as I'm loaded, I just snap my turret over to him and shoot him. So that's the first example. Let's go on to another. Here I am on airfield in my E50M. 
This T60, T62A just got spotted. I'm going for a couple of snipe on him. I have full APCR loaded. And I'm going to try to bait him by turning my turret. So as you can see, I'm just staring off into the distance in the water. And as you can tell, this guy's not a great player, or as you'll tell in a moment. Now, he almost fell for it there, but I turned a little bit too early. So I didn't quite bait him up. Now, there's honestly literally no reason for me to be looking over here. So we should know that I'm trying to bait him, but he's just either not that smart or he just simply doesn't care. But that's what th that's the kind of players who this tip works the best against. So here I am. I'm turning, staring off into the distance, and he actually comes over right now. And so I get a free shot in, but it's not really free because out of nowhere comes a VZ and he clips me in the back. And I try to bait this guy again. I mean, it's not really much of a bait, but because I'm not trading positively, but I think you get the point from this. Um, let me quick show like one or two more examples. So this one is a little bit special because it's actually a two-player bait. Uh, I did a bait with my platoon mate, but it involves the same concept of turning your turret. But this time, instead of him shooting back the target, it's me. I'll be waiting for the target to poke. So there's going to be Progetto over here. There he is. He's lit. Heish, my platoon mate, looks at him, and he backs off. But right now, we're in voice chat together. I tell Heish, look forward towards the scorpion. I'll pull back, and then he's going to see that your turret's turned, and he'll poke, and I'll shoot him. So that's exactly what he does. You can see he turns his turret to the side towards the scorpion. And watch what the Progetto does. Free shot for me. So yeah, this is kind of a unique example, but it's still the same concept. All right, on to the next tip. This was the last example. This tip is another baiting tip into... It's another tip into getting enemies to poke you if they're just being stubborn and don't want to trade with you, especially in an alleyway like this, uh, Banana Road on Himmels. Sometimes you just can't get out any damage because the enemies refuse to poke because they're scared. So another way besides the turret uh, locking method is to actually just drive out in the open and let, make them think that you have a free shot. So in a second I'll show you what that means. So he spotted me. Let's just pretend like he's behind the corner though. There, he's behind the corner. Now look what I do here. Instead of just sitting here, pre-aiming this angle, let's pretend I'm perma-spotted so there's like an E3 behind him or something just perma-spotting me. Instead of just poking in front of me, which he'll probably never do if I'm perfectly hull down, I want to give him a potential shot on me so that he's baited into peeking. So what I do is I drive out a little bit into the open, and that's what this tip is. If you want your enemies to peek and you want to bait them into peeking, sometimes what you can do is drive a little bit too far out into the open and make it seem like you're a free target. You might even pretend like you're driving up to this rubble pile here, but then you just suddenly stop, turn back, and snap them as they poke the corner to shoot you. Now, to do this, you have to be very good at timing, because if you mess it up, they're just going to shoot you for free. So you have to know what you can get away with. Um, but it does actually work quite often. So here, as you can see, he peaked too late. I got a free shot into him, unfortunately, it bounced because I'm firing APCR, and his only shot on me was basically on my upper plate. He hit, like, the corner of it. And I'll just show you this a few more times. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any examples of this in a random battle. But see, he's not peeking because I'm perfectly hull down. But I'm still spotted, so I pretend like I'm going out in the open. Now here, I actually fuck this up a little bit. I drive on top of the rubble pile, so he should actually shoot me here. Because he has a shot on me. And yet, he still bounces. Because keep in mind, as they come around the corner, their dispersion values on the move are not going to be great depending on what tank they're in. If they're like in an E50M, they can snap you quite easily. But if they're in like a 705A or something, which has terrible bloom values, the chance that they're actually going to hit such a small target if you time it correctly is pretty low. And depending on the, what enemy tank it is, it might be pretty easy for you to snap them, especially if you have a good gun for snapping and if they have a weak turret. So a 705A is not a great example for that. But like a leopard... 
Uh, Leopard 1 isn't great either. Honestly, Progetto. Progetto is a good pick. I'll show you this one more time. Now, this time, I actually do a little bit of a advanced tactic where I pretend like I'm turning. Now, would I ever actually do this in a random battle? Probably very rarely. I just kind of wanted to show off. But as you can see, it does get him to peak. And by the time he's poked, I'm almost perfectly safe. So it, it worked, basically. Now, obviously, I'm telling him to do this because this is a demonstration, but... It will occasionally work on uh, random players. And if you guys don't believe me, like I seriously do actually use a, all of these tips quite often. Uh, especially when I'm playing against tier 8s and stuff. Because those players generally fall for the baits more easily. And don't realize that you're going to be so quick to react. Because they're just newer players. Or less experienced players. Alright, so that's all for this tip. Okay, so this last tip is going to be probably the hardest one to explain out of this video. But basically the tip is, if you want to trade versus somebody when you're side scraping or when you're hull down, but they're refusing to fire, sometimes uh, you have to actually give them something to shoot at in order for you to be able to return fire. So let's say you're on a corner in a mouse something like this and you're you're in a perfect side scrape and you're playing against an enemy mouse who's firing a pcr so 3 311 penetration uh this is the corner right here and this is all he can see if you're trying to bait him into shooting so you can shoot him back but you're just in a perfect side scrape where he can't pen any of it this is a live live version so if it's red you can't pen it's the effective thickness then you're basically wasting your time um, a lot of the time unless the player is really bad and doesn't know that they can't pen this at all what you want to do especially towards the end of a game when you're trying to get out damage you need to force trades uh, but even especially in a mouse since you have so much HP if you just want to trade against somebody instead of just sitting in a perfect side scrape and then every once in a while once you reload turning and shooting them exposing your turret if you want to actually take less damage and make the trade possible um, instead of just sitting there in a perfect side scrape what you can do instead is actually turn and give them something to potentially penetrate so for example like this roughly instead of angling uh, so that you're like this and all you show them is you can't they can't pen you at all you want to angle more like this if you want to trade with them and then just give them potential shots. So let's just pretend the corner's here. The front of your turret is, is blocked. It's like this. At least now they have a slight chance. So their reticle will be orange. So they're more, way more likely to fire. And as you can see, it shows the, the percent chance on the bottom of this uh, box here. 28 uh, on the turret, roughly, up to 35. And up to around 20 on the hull. You could even angle a little bit more than this against a mouse. Uh, so basically the goal is, if you're trying to force a trade, give them something to shoot at. Give them a potentially penetrating shot, which is low probability, so that they actually fire so you're able to poke them in return fire. Because if you just do a perfect side scrape like this, they're just not going to fire at you. And then your only option is to turn and expose your weak spot if you want to trade with them. And so... This is what I see a lot um, in, in heavily armored tanks. People will just sit on a corner in a perfect side scrape or a perfect hull down. And then everybody will just refuse to trade versus them because they know they can't pen you. But if you just give them a little bit to shoot at that they could potentially penetrate. And you can kind of trick them into shooting something which has a low chance to pen. Then that gives you an opportunity to return fire. So I'm going to quickly show you in a training room what this might look like. Uh, so I'll see you in the replay. Here we are in the replay. Uh, so the first thing you'll see, um, we're playing here on Studs Yankee. This is a pretty common situation where I feel the need to use this trick. You've got someone stuck in this corner and you really want to dig them out, but they're side scraping against you or, or they're just poked on you. But you're trying to side scrape on this corner. The thing is, maybe the game is ending, your team is going through the through the south and the enemy is clearly losing 
So you want to get out damage and you're still pretty healthy. Let's just give that as an example. If you're this mouse player, what you don't want to do is what uh, I am doing right here. This is Patty's perspective. Thank you, Patty, for helping me with this. So I'm watching Patty's perspective. Um, you don't want to just sit in a perfect side scrape where there's basically no chance of him penning me because he's just not going to shoot. As you can see, I can't pen any of this. I have a pen indicator mod downloaded. Uh, when it says zero over here, there's a zero percent chance to pen. Uh, when it says any other number, that's just the effective thickness. So the effective thickness of where I'm aiming right now is 370, and I have 326 pen. It's basically a zero percent chance. Is this one time speed? Yes. So here's just kind of an example of uh, what you don't want to do if you're trying to force a trade. Again, if you're just trying to survive or something, then this is perfectly acceptable. Um, but if you're trying to trade, then it's, it's not going to work. Um, they're just not going to fire. They're going to wait for you to turn your turret when you do shoot, and you're just going to be stuck there in a stalemate for minutes. So let's quick skip to uh, <clears throat> where I show how to do it properly. Take just a second. Should be about right here. So Patty will go into a proper stance. And basically what he's doing is he's he's turning his turret more so that I have a better angle on it. And he's turning his hull more so that I have a better angle on it. And if you look at this uh, pen indicator uh, mod, it'll tell you what the effective thickness is right now. I, it's actually is po possible to pen that angle. So there's a greater chance that they're actually going to try to shoot it. As you can see, the reticle is yellow. And the effective thickness is 351, and I have 326 penetration. This is just probably a 25% chance to pen or something. But a lot of the time, that's good enough. The enemy sees the yellow indicator, and they'll go for it. And that, when they shoot, that gives you an opportunity to trade back. He could actually be over-angling a little bit more here, just a little bit. Um, but you, you'll get the point in a second. Uh, so I, I look for penning shots. That shot was just a bad shot. That was probably never going to pen. But he, right about here, he starts angling pretty correctly. So he's giving me a pretty good shot. Uh, right here, it's 366, 326. This is, a, like again, probably 20% chance to pen, but I go for it. And that gives me an opportunity to trade back on me. And I'm just going to show like two more shots, probably two or three. There, I didn't see the pen, pen percent chance, but it was probably like 30% or something. Uh... 326 over 364. I don't know the exact calculation for that, but it's a pretty low percent chance to pen, but at least he's exposing something to me so that I'm baited into firing. Alright, that's all for this tip. Uh, this is going to be the last tip. Thank you all for watching, everybody. And uh, this video took me a long time to make. Again, thanks to Necto for helping me out and Patty as well. Uh, Please subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. I have a whole playlist of how to improve at World of Tanks, and there's this playlist as well where I go over tips. Although these videos I don't put out very often because it's pretty hard to compile all the tips. It took me hours to think of all these tips and to figure out the best way to demonstrate them, looking through old replays, trying to find examples and whatnot. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.